Yo guys, before we even get into this video, I just want to show you some of the deals we picked up. This video is going to explain to you how I've been making easily 100k an hour by trading with the Copa Libertadores players. And I'll explain everything in the video. But during the video, just my luck, nothing really popped. So I was explaining what to do and that's fine. And it's good for you guys to learn that. But um, I just want to show you some of the cards we've been picking up. These Hinestroza, for example, these Borjas. We've been picking these up at 60k, flipping on for quite a big, big, big bit of profit. These Hinestroza is well under 45k. For all of them, this Bangura, I think it was like 14k. Um... And I just want to show you that we are picking these deals up just because the video, nothing really came up while I was on the video and I didn't want it to be a situation when you guys are looking at this. Hinnestrosa, for example, I've just picked up for 40k. As you've just seen, I've been selling for 55k all day. So I'll take a nice 12, 13k profit out of that. Um, and yeah, so I'll list it right now and I will get into the video. I will see you in a second. Yo, what is up, guys? Welcome to a new video with me, Fuzzball40. As always, if you're new around here, please do subscribe down below, click the like button, all that good stuff. Um, again, massive thanks for the support recently. We're averaging about 120 subscribers a day over here on YouTube. Um, 5K is massively in sight now, so I'm massively thankful for all that support. But as always, if you guys want to watch me do this live, where I do most of this stuff live is over on Twitch. So if you want to come over to Twitch, I am live right now. You'll be able to get involved. There's a huge amount of potential to make coins this week from all the content we're getting. EA are doing their utmost to distract everyone from Kurt and Pez and all that sort of stuff. So over on FIFA, we're getting really good content, and I will give them the credit for that. They probably saw that they were getting a bit of a, a bit of a pound in my people and they were actually, let's try and, and put it back somehow. Um, but you can't really have it both ways. You can't complain when there's no content or when they give us good content goes only because of Pez. And then their content is content. Um, I'm the first to criticise them. But it is, the content is very good this week. This video is continuing the theme from last night. If you listen to what I said last night in the video, GG's you, you made very, very good coins. Last night I was flipping these Eugenio Mena left back cards. I was picking them up at 47k, selling them at 60k. Um, and this is continuing a the theme because this video, again, is going to teach you how to make 100k, 200k a day by using the market conditions that are currently out there. Because the most important thing, again, I keep talking to you guys about is the how and why we trade um, and the reasons what, like, that's what, what, my, my, what I call the variables in trading. And the variables right now is the fact that the market is massively spiraling downwards. And always what I do when I, when I see that happening, I go, OK, cool, what, let me think about why it's doing that. So the first reason is completely and utterly obvious. The game's going towards the, the end cycle now. So relatively meta cards that have been surpassed with other versions of those cards will continue to, continue to go down in price. Now, we've seen a hard crash. I've seen Messi's down 120k on Xbox. Ronaldo's similar. I usually use those and Mbappe, Neymar to work out what the market's doing. But the big reason why the market is down right now is purely based upon the fact that this Foot Player Days promo is putting double the packs a normal promo we put into the market in some cases. Because we're getting two for one packs on rare player packs, on jumbo uh, rare player packs. Lots of packs coming out. EA are bringing out really good packs for SBC rewards. They've upped their game a little bit. So we're seeing a, a, a sort of downward trend. So advice to you, if you're holding on to meta cards, you're not sure where to sell. My advice is sell. Um, I'm, I'm relatively confident in saying that. The reason being is I can only see the market keep going down for the next week, especially while there's promos on. We don't know what else is coming. So if you're, if you're, if you're worried about it and you want to try and save yourself some coins, sell. However, when these, when these promos come out, I always say it, the best way to trade with his promos is whatever is in that promo. So last night I was flipping Eugenio Menes. We're back on the main account at the moment. But last night I was flipping Eugenio Menes for, um, for 60k. And right now he's down at 37k. There's one here. And what I'm doing at the moment is I'm keeping an eye on all these prices. So let's go have a look at Eugenio Menes. I've just been looking at him. He's currently about 40k on the market, right? But we're seeing these, these ones pop for 37k at a time. So what I'm currently doing is I'm just transfer targets. And I'm just seeing if we can get, if we can get a decent little undercut. The reason why I'm now starting to do this is because I do my, my research and I look at this Eugenio Mena and I go, okay, he's 37, next up is 39, been there for four minutes, and then there's 40 who's been there for ages and I'm not selling at 40 currently. However, the one card that I keep talking about is way too good a card and he's dropped off massively since yesterday, but he's just started seeing a climb back now is Matias Rojas. Now, this card is insanely, insanely good. It's a great card. But I was seeing him pop early on at 170 and I was like, mm, is he going to keep going down? What do I do? Now, I've seen people advising that you buy into these guys and hold. And in my opinion, that is terrible, terrible advice. Everything on FIFA so far this year has shown that if you hold cards on the Monday into the Friday, you don't tend to make much profit or in a lot of cases you make a loss. I made this error when I bought into Marlins. I bought into Donya Marlin. I broke even on him in the end because throughout the week it kept going down. So what is the play when the market is like this? The play is, is instant flipping, basically. That is the play. I didn't pick up the one a minute ago at 170 in Rojas, and that for me was an error because he got back up to 190 again within about 10 minutes. So 170 on him, if I pick him up 190, that's 12,000 coins profit a card. 
So my advice to you guys right now is to look at all these cards. Now, if we go to Footbin, we're going to, we're going to Footwiz because Footwiz actually right now is doing better than the limited Doris players. Footbin doesn't seem to have them set out the way it should do, sort of having the team. But I'm looking at the moment at these sort of cards. Carlos Tevez, Salvio, Lissandro Lopez, Valencia. All the ones sort of 40k in and around that and above, I'm looking at. So this Diego Polenta, for example, last night, he was give or take on Xbox about 40k. And weirdly with him, he doesn't seem to have crashed off too much. In fact, if anything, he's probably got slightly more expensive. So I'm looking at this guy here. Let's look at Diego Polenta. I'm looking at him right now and I'm thinking, okay, cool. What's his, what's his price currently? Right now he's sat at about 45, 43 is the sort of minimum on the market. I'm looking at 43, 250 here. So I'm going to him to transfer targets. And I'm just going to look for undercuts on them. And think, and right, can I pick up these guys? Is there a good deal here? Again, go back to Mena. I'll keep, keep checking out Mena and being like, okay, this is where Mena's at the moment. Let's just see what we're saying. We know he's at about 40k at the moment. But has anyone undercut the 30? So that 37 has just come off the market. But what now is happening? There's more of them here. So there's 40 here, the 39, the 38. Now I wait to see if we get any sort of decent undercut. Now I know they're selling consistently. Because in my transfer targets, for example, this is on Xbox, obviously. I'm looking at my transfer targets now and I'm seeing him at 37s selling quite comfortably. I'm thinking, okay, cool. So profit after tax, or like, so we'll, so we'll sell price after tax on a 37. You've got to divide it to your times it by 0.95. It's about 35k, just maybe slightly more than 35k. Um, and I'm looking at him thinking, okay, cool. So if he's selling consistently at 37, probably that 38 goes as well. I know my buy price for some form of profit on him is going to be 33, 34, possibly 35 if those come off the market quickly enough. And that's how you start to work out how you trade in this market with the market coming down. I like trading with the Copper Libertadores players. The reason I like that is there's constant supply of them. Now, there's constant supply of all gold cards, but gold cards are difficult because you tend to get big undercuts on them and there's a lot of cards to be trying to keep an eye on. The Libertadores players, if we go back to, to foot, Footbin or Footwiz, I always say, always say Footbin, if you look at all these guys here, they're all sort of 650 and below. And then once you get to a certain point, they tail off. This um, Hinnestroza, I've been looking at him today as well. Because of his pace, it just means that he's met enough that people want to buy into him. He's 47 at the moment. I saw him at 40 earlier on. Again, didn't buy him. So I want to see, first off, for, this, for the early part of my Monday, when I look at this card, I go, right, if he's currently selling at 40k, I can flip him. I then want to know what he sells at 6 o'clock. And if it's 6 o'clock, I again see him drop down to 25s and 30s. I'm thinking, well, there's a chance that he bounces back then because that's probably a bit too low, if that makes sense. It's probably a little bit too low. People will still be buying him. Again, the same for this uh, friends and... Friends a leader is his name. Love a little click on him. I was looking at him earlier on. He got down to just over 30k. Um, and again, I'm looking at these graphs. And the reason why I look at these graphs is these graphs don't tell me the sell price, but they tell me the average price. And um, from about yesterday till now, he sort of averaged out at about 32. Now, he isn't selling for 32. So if I look at Friends a leader now, if I go to Friends a leader, let's have a little look. Uh, Friends a leader. Right now, he's on the market at 36, right? So this is why I say you've got this graph. They're only an average price has been listed for. So, but that average price of 32 tells me he's actually slightly up at the moment. So that, that, again, gives me a good opportunity for flipping him. The Rojas I showed you earlier on was down on, on... Let me have a little look on this to make sure. The exact price. He was down at 164, if I show you that again. So Rojas was down at 164, but I know on Xbox right now, he's up at 188. Now, if someone's looking at that thinking, what, what do I sell him for? And they list him at 164, I'll make a profit from it anyway. But it also means that there isn't the crash on these guys that I expected there to be perhaps perhaps into today. Doesn't mean they're not going to crash off during the week. And this is why I won't hold them. I'm not going to hold them, but I will be flipping them. But I'm going to keep going back to them. And I keep looking back again. And Mena's the one right now, because he's got that strong link into Diaz, he's the one that I like the most right now. He's the one I'm looking at thinking, well, he's got a strong link into Diaz. Look, 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 there you go. Right now, they're all back up at 40k again. All of them on the market, except for 39,750. So I now know 37 is a buy-in price. I could buy in at 37. Probably sell them for 40 eventually and it'd be fine. I'm going to try and get for 36s and stuff like that. But I'm going to, what I'm going to do now is build a spreadsheet up. And I'm going to set all these cards in place as to where I think they need to be. In terms of what the price they're at, how I flip them. And I'm going to put on there the flip price each day. So I'm going to say, okay, cool. I've been looking at them for today and I know they've been 40k. So tonight I get them at 30k. I know that even if the bounce back tomorrow isn't as strong, if they get to 35, 36 again tomorrow, I'm going to make profit. Or if they get back to 35, 36 today, I can flip them straight away. And so I'm going to look for the 6pm 6, 6 content drop again. Last night I was flipping this guy for 10,000 coins profit at a time. Over on the 0 to 1 million, which has now been pretty much cleared out, ready for a new road to glory. But I was flipping him because then it meant I could open more packs up for the stream and use the coins to open packs up. But I'm going to keep an eye on these guys left, right and centre. And I'm going to, when they move, I need to know they've moved. I need to know they've come down, they've come up and whatnot. That's what I'm going to be doing. 
Another thing that I want, I want to talk to you guys about today as well is I keep showing you guys this gold defender, major nation and whatever, and it's a really good filter. But I want to go over the midfielders as well because I haven't really spoke about the midfielders, but midfielders can be really, really good. Now, the problem you have with the midfielders, especially with certain cl club, like, clubs, is look at this Carlos Gill, for example. He is a random guy from, I think it's the MLS. I'm pretty sure it's the MLS. And he sits there and Diego Castro sits there for ages. However, if you're smart and you're able to work it out, Another good one's England as well, England, uh, England midfielders. But if you're smart and able to work out which ones to avoid, it's another good one that you can pick up. Again, for me, I'm going to avoid the championship guys for this. But if I can go, okay, cool, actually, English midfielders here, they're all championship that are low. I go, okay, cool, English midfielders for the Premier League. And I go, let me have a little look what they're selling for at the moment. So there's 600 there for Cooks and stuff like that. Let's see if we can get down to 500. No, so 550 is the lowest they're selling for at the moment. So if I flick through to the end, as always... There's going to be some 59 for that, I knew it. Here again, I could be doing the same thing. Can compare price back out the exact same way that I do it on that. And it's a way to break down and become smarter with your filters and think, okay, cool. So if the defenders aren't popping, let me do the midfielders. But if I'm going to do Spanish midfielders, for example, midfielder Spain, I'm going to think, actually, let me narrow it down a little bit more because there are guys in random leagues that aren't selling currently. So let me go across to La Liga Santander and look, look at what they're selling for. So we've got a couple at 450. We've got a few at 450 for CDMs. So I'm like, okay, cool. So if anything that pops realistically underneath 450, I can buy. And actually, pretty much anything now that pops is probably going to be a buy realistically. But then I go, okay, they're selling for, for 450. So what can I do? I go and change my filter to that. And I look at all these guys and I go, okay, cool. Let me throw a bid on every single one of these guys. Because I know they're selling for 450 minimum. So if I can get any of these guys here for anywhere near 300 coins, I probably won't want to pay more than 300 coins, but I can get at least 100 coins profit on every single one of these cards here. And right now, none of bids on it. And I think it's because I haven't showed you guys the other ways to trade with this stuff. Because I, I seem to be one of the only guys that talks about this method other than a couple of streamers that I know. I haven't shown you this method. These aren't filters that are, are like massively competitive. So you can sit there and pop them on the market and just try and pick them up. But it's about being smart of your filters on these guys and going, okay, cool. So the midfielders aren't selling because there's MLS guys in there, but they are selling for 450. And again, the Premier League, let's look at England Premier League. If I go back to the Premier League for England, I can go, okay, cool. I know they're selling for about 500 coins right now. Let's have a little look and see what's at 300. So these ones have got a few bids on them, but nothing massive. These Tom Davies, for example, have got a few bids, but the rest of them, nothing at all. So this Callum Chambers, we'll bid on. This Stanislas, we'll bid on. We'll bid on this Solly March. And we'll just go there and we'll see what we pick up. We might pick up none at all. We might pick up two or three. We never know. That's what it comes down to. But then again, you can check price. Like I told you before, you can go onto the transfer targets. So someone started bidding on the ones I bid on now. I oh, know these guys have gone there. But yeah, someone started bidding on some of the ones. But again, you can start looking at this and go, okay, cool. Which ones can I bid a bit more on? What's he currently selling for? So we go compare price on him. So we know he's at 550, 500. So he's about a 400, 450 guy. I don't want to spend any more than that. As you can see, these menders now, I know they've sold at that price. And it's about, like I say to you guys, it's about putting your coins and places in different places to make as much coins as you can. If you've got 50k you're making from those gold cards, if you've got, if you're flipping the Copa Libertadores players, again, we'll go back to Menno and have a look at him. If, you, if, you, if you're making... 50k from all these different methods you're learning. You've got a constant influx of coins. Trust me, your coin total will start to spiral. I, this account literally this morning had about, I think, 120k on it. And I sold off those of my investments that I bought into. A lot of the 86 investments that I had in terms of fodder, I bought like one over pretty much every single one. I sold them all on for 3 or 4k profit because Sandro came out yesterday and it spiked in price. Um, but it's about placing your coins in loads of different places, as many different places as possible to make as many coins as you can. Now, let's use Genio Menu again. He's now, he's sat constantly at 40k. So I now know, okay, cool, 40k is his price. That's it, fine, no problem. If I go back to Rojas, we saw him at 188 earlier on. I'm going to assume that 188 is gone. I'd be surprised if it's still there. Uh, let's have a little look. Yeah, so 188 is gone. And now Rojas is sat at 192. So now I go, okay, cool, 192, it's about 10k. It's not 10k, it's slightly lower than 10k, but it's about a 10k after tax. So I'm like, okay, cool, so anything under 180 right now for me is a buy. I can flip him straight away for 3, 4k profit relatively easily. I've seen him selling at 190, so it's not a difficult, it's not a difficult buy at all. And people will underlist these cards. I cannot stress it enough. Last night, the menus were selling at about 55. People were listing them at 47. The 55s then went and I was like, okay, cool, here we go. There's a 60, there's a 60s. Easy as pie, it's not difficult. A method you do with this though, same thing as I always say to you guys. Set your filter to buy now, compare price back out. At six o'clock, do that, you will see them pop. In my opinion, you don't want to really want to be going for anything less. Than the sort of 40k guys, the, the 15, 16k guys are irrelevant. The only ones that would be different to that are if you can find any of the guys. So let's set, have a little look again back on, on Footbin. If we look at like, 
Ignacio Scocco, for example, this guy here. Right, he's 20k at the moment. This 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 Scocco guy. Let's have a little look at him. So we know he's about 20k at the moment. Go down to him at 20k. 21 there. So these are all ones that have just been pretty much packed, right? So I know he's 20k and I'm like, okay, cool, that's no problem. However, what I need to think about with him now is he's got 86 pace, I think, and 87 shooting. I'm going to look at him with a Hunter, because Hunter's going to bang that shooting up perfectly. So I'll look, look at what he's selling for with a Hunter. So is, that, is there any of them at all? Where is he with a Hunter? Is he in? There's none on the market. There is some on the market. So there's one for 34 of a Hunter. You're not going to get that for him. A Hunter at the moment is about 7 to 8k, give or take. So you're not going to get 34 for him. But I know that the most expensive one for Hunter on the market is 34,500. So that's another thing you can be thinking about. Some of these cards with shadows on them. Suddenly the price can start to can start to spiral if you can pick up any guys like this with a Hunter. If I if I see him at 21, 22k, 23k, but he's got a Hunter on him, I'm like, well, actually, that's okay because I know he sells at 20. I can pick him up at 22, for example, if one pops at 22, because they will. I've seen I've seen the raw hasses with uh, shadows on him today. If I'm like, okay, cool, he pops with a Hunter at 22. I know I can probably sell him for about 26, 27 to someone picking him up with a hunter just simplistically like that. So I then go, okay, cool. That's maybe five or six K profit that I weren't thinking because I can buy a little bit higher on him because he has a hunter card on him. Always remember, hunter and shadow creates more value. There's always more value. But I'm telling you now, you'll see it tomorrow in the video. I will be picking these guys up all day and you'll see my coin total will spike because I'll be picking these guys up left, right and center today because I'll, be, I'll just be flipping them. The rule right now, when the market is, is crashing, do not hold, always flip. Just a simplistic rule for you. The market is down, do not hold, always flip. And my advice to you, get a little document and just have the price of meta cards like Messi, Ronaldo, Mbappe, Neymar, some icons perhaps on there. Watch their price. If they're coming down, it means the market's coming down. It's as simplistic as that. But summing up this video, right now look for quick flips on Copper Libertadores players. Check the price they're currently selling that and look for undercuts. It's a simplistic way to trade it. Look at them with Hunters and Shadows on them. It's really not a difficult thing to do. They will pop. They will come up. Hunters and Shadows add... Hunters add about 7k of value. Shadows can up, add up anywhere up towards sort of 10k because that's what they sell for. They sell for about 12k. So just be mindful of that. Look for Shadows and Hunters. It adds an added value onto your card. Flip them straight away. Do not hold them. Flip them. Otherwise, the market, when it comes down, you will lose out. I cannot stress that enough. 100%. And with the gold filter that I've been showing you guys in terms of gold defenders any nation... Use midfielders and start to break it down a little bit. Look at the midfielders that from the French midfielders and go, okay, cool, these ones are staying low because there's some French midfielders from, I don't know, the Belgian league that are keeping the price down. Right, so now look at French midfielders from Liga 1 and specifically those guys. Okay, let me put bids on them, see how many I win, see if I win any at all. Let's have a little look now, actually, quickly before I go. Well, there you go, one, two, three. We picked up three of those guys straight away. Now, it might not be massive profit on these guys. We'll clear off all the ones that have sold. It may not be massive profit on them, but it's still profit on them. If I just sat there, I might have been able to go, okay, cool, I'll make a bit more profit. And again, I'm just going to look at Polenta. See what he's doing. So I know he's on the market for 43 there. I'm looking for undercuts on him. He's gonna, not going to show me last page, but it is what it is. But that's basically how you're going to make coins at the moment. Quick flips, instant flipping. That's going to make you most of your bank. The only, the only exception to that is going to be silvers. Uh, and the video on that tomorrow, do not miss tomorrow's video. It is going to be a banger because there's a lot of content coming in the next couple of days that you guys can make a lot of coins from. Uh, but as always, if you're new around here, subscribe down below, click the like button, it's massively appreciated. And as always, if you want to watch me do this live on Twitch, click the link down below, come over to Twitch. And if you want to subscribe over there, you get access to trading guides. Uh, I put a lot of work in my Discord to help make you guys coins. But for now, lads, I'm out. Peace out. I will speak to you.